This meeting of the Gadsden City Council will now come to order and the chair calls on City Clerk Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilman Harris? Here. Williams? Here. Avery? Here. Eccles? Here. Stewart? Here. Cannon? Here. Reed? Here. We have a quorum present. The meeting is open for business. I'm going to ask Councilman Williams to lead the invocation. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be here today. Father, we thank you for all present. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to engage in the activities of city business. Father, we ask that you would touch and bless us, Father as we serve as stewards over the resources that, that, are, that, that, that we have responsibility for, Father. We ask, Father, that you would allow us to operate and function with wisdom, Father God, and the expertise that's needed to be effective, Father. We love you, we glorify you, and we thank you for this day. For it's in Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Chair, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the work session and council meeting on May the 1st. So moved. Second. Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor, <coughs> there be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to approve minutes. Chair, will entertain a motion to ratify payment of the accounts for the week of April the 27th through May the 3rd. So, so moved. Second. Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to ratify payment of the accounts. Proclamations, Mayor? Yes. I have three today. First one is uh, for Miss Ariel Raleigh, would you come up, please, ma'am? <laughs> I want to say before I read this, she got up at pre-council last week and talked for about five or ten minutes. Did an excellent job. Yes. When I was a senior in high school, she's only a freshman, a three-minute speech almost gave me a nervous breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. <clears throat> Whereas Ariel Wally, a freshman at Gaston City High School, attended an anti-bullying rally in October 2011, <clears throat> where she heard Kirk Smalley speak concerning the suicide of his 11-year-old son after he was bullied. During the rally, Ariel observed the reactions of her fellow students and noted that some who were crying empathized with the person who was bullied and others who were laughing would likely bully other students. The realization that the number of students crying or laughing was too great and inspired Ariel, who herself is a victim of bullying, to take action to raise awareness, educating people of the issues of bullying, and teaching them to open their eyes to the issues around them. Whereas Ariel Raleigh has <coughs> organized a walk a mile in their shoes, a 5K run, and a one mile fun run designed to promote awareness of bullying, which will be held on Saturday at the YMCA of Coosa Valley. Therefore, I, Sherman Guyton, Mayor of the City of Gadsden, do hereby proclaim Saturday, May 12, 2012, is Walk a Mile in Their Shoes Day in the City of Gadsden, and I urge all citizens to join with Ariel Raleigh in being the voice of the silent and working to lower the number of bullies. I, I, I do want to say a little more about that. I, uh, when I was in the seventh grade, I was 12, and back then you didn't get promoted till you passed, and we had some guys in the seventh, eighth, and ninth grade who were 15 and 16. <laughs> and if you think we didn't get bullied, they just <laughs> grabbed our arms and took our lunch money away from us, and, mm -hmm. and among other things. Of course, today, I, you know, we got over it, but I think today it's so much worse with all the social media and things you can do to them other than just a little harassment. And I think it's really one of when I taught school, I used to call it a shakedown if I ever saw the older guys with one of the smaller guys' arm. Uh, he got about five licks in front of everybody. And, and I've noticed that even in high school, as, as you have, a lot of times the kids who do what the teachers say, make good grades, and are good students, the ones who don't do that, they make fun of them and bully them and pick on them because they don't want you to do something they're too lazy to do. 
So we appreciate you doing that very much. Mayor. Keep the work. Yes. I just want to make a comment. You know, the people talk about how we're going to change the world, how we're going to change attitude. She's a prime example. We exactly. do it one student at a time. That's, That's all right. it takes is just a one. That's right. Next, I have a proclamation for Dr. Renee Coverhouse and Betty Willoughby. Dang, all these big proclamations with big words like mayonnaise is getting me confused. <laughs> Whereas mental health is essential to everyone's overall health and well-being, all Americans experience times of difficulty and stress in their lives. There is a strong body of research that supports specific tools that all Americans can use to better handle challenges and to protect their health and well-being. Mental health conditions are real and prevalent in our nation. With effective treatment, those individuals with mental health conditions can recover and lead full productive lives. Each business, school, government agency, health care provider, organization, and citizen shares the burden of mental health problems and has a responsibility to promote mental wellness and support prevention efforts. And that is accomplished in this community through Mental Health America of Etowah. Be it resolved that I, Sherman Gatton, the mayor of the city of Gaston, proclaim May 2012 as Mental Health Month, healing traumas, invisible wounds in the city of Gaston, Alabama, as mayor of the city of Gaston. I also call upon the citizens, governmental agencies, public and private institutions, businesses and schools in the city to re recommit our community to increasing awareness and understanding of mental health, the steps our citizens can take to protect their mental health, and the need for appropriate and accessible services for all people with mental health conditions. You know, the previous proclamation about um, bullying and congratulations to you for your initiative is part of what happens um, with trauma people suffer th through mental health issues and just because the external trauma is gone doesn't mean that the wounds are not still there and that people don't still suffer. We tend to think if a tornado has passed by or if a person has come home from war, or if a serious situation has resolved itself, then everything's fine and people are okay, and they're not. And one of the things we're trying to do is raise awareness of that this month as May being Mental Health Month. So thank you very much for this proclamation. We appreciate it. Okay, the last one is for Miss Rebecca Weber. And Le Layla Paget, please come forward. And in case y'all don't know, I happen to live close to Miss Weber. She makes the best pecan pies you'll ever eat. <laughs> I think I still have the last plate she gave me. I washed it, but I don't believe I've returned it yet. <laughs> hey, Is that a hint, Mayor? To for her to do another one, sir? <laughs> Was that a hint for her to do another one? No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't need another one. Whereas the family serving as the primary source of love, identity, self-esteem, and support is the very foundation of our communities and state. In Gaston, Alabama, Etowah County, there are over 200 children in youth and foster care being provided with a safe, secure, and stable home along with the compassion and nurture of a foster family. Foster families, we open their homes and hearts and offer help to children whose families are in crisis. They play a vital role in helping children and families heal and reconnect and launching children into successful adulthood. Dedicated foster families frequently adopt foster children, resulting in a greater need for more foster families. There are numerous individuals, public and private organizations, who work to increase public awareness of the needs of children in the in and leaving foster care, as well as the enduring and valuable contribution of foster parents and the foster care system is only as good as those who choose to be part of it. Therefore, I, Sherman Guyton, Mayor of the City of Gazin, by the virtue of the authority vested in me, do hereby proclaim May as Foster Care Month in the City of Gaston and urge all citizens to come forward and do something positive that will help change a lifetime for children and youth in foster care. Dr. I just want to say on behalf of the staff, Mr. Siraj, our staff, our foster parents, and our children, we thank you for recognizing us and um, giving us this plaque. Uh, we always need new foster parents, and we're always looking to recruit. If anyone would like to contact us, um, we have a number of children that always can use a good home. Thank you.
Thank you, Mayor. Unfinished business resolution honoring abatement of nuisance on property at 1419 Jackson Avenue in District 5. Jack D. Clay Sr. and wife Margie N. Clay being the last known owners. <coughs> this re resolution was tabled for 30 days on April 3rd. What's the pleasure of the council? Mr. President, on the recommendation of the building department, I'd like to ask for another 30 day table on this. Uh, second. 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 <coughs> Clerk, do you take the vote? <coughs> Those in favor to table the resolution for 30 days, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to table for 30 days. New business? Is there any new business? Mr. President, I have one. <coughs> I'd like to ask for unanimous consent to consider an ordinance amending fiscal year 2012 budget to reflect the transfer of funds to cover the cost of additional audio, video, lapel cameras. Second. Second. Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor to consider the ordinance today, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Consent has been granted. I move to adopt. Second. 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 You get a second? Yeah, I got a yeah, second. Three out of them. Is there any discussion? <laughs> Mayor. I, I do have, have one thing. Uh, I just <coughs> have a problem sometimes when things are misrepresented in the newspaper. Uh, the Public Safety Committee uh, ordered wanted to order the cameras, which is a great idea, and uh, they recommended it to the council, and we decided to order half and see how they work before we spent the money for the rest of them. And then later some issues came up, so the council changed their mind, which was fine with me, and we are ordering all of those. But I, it was, uh, if you do read the new newspaper, uh, the editorial sound like I was too tight to buy them all to start with and was told to cut the check. And it amazes me how people who never come to a meeting, we don't know who they are, they don't sign their names, know so much about what goes on that they don't put the correct information in the paper. And I just want to clarify that point. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is there any other discussion? I guess that was discussion. That, that, was a, that was a discussion. I'm just glad to get the cameras and finally get this thing resolved and get it done. I'm with you 100%. I wouldn't mind having one I, and I believe everybody's ready for this to proceed on to get that. I think yeah. we all realize the benefit of this. Uh, I think everybody up here knows the most dangerous person in the world is one that's misinformed. That's you, right. You can tell a liar real quick, but misinformed when he really believes what he's talking about. <laughs> let, let, let me say, uh, uh, we're, we're spending this money on these cameras and recorders, and there ain't no, they ain't worth the paper with it's written on it. We don't enforce a strict uh, guidelines as far as their usage. Um, you know, and that's where my concern will come in, and I'm sure our new chief will, will deal with that <coughs> issue. Uh, I don't think the council at this point in time can, but there should be some type of penalty, a very se severe penalty if they don't happen to turn their camera on or something happened or it wasn't working I mean you know it's for their protection and if I was a police officer and I came on duty the first thing I would do is to check my equipment to make sure it's working it's whether it's my gun or whatever else and if it ain't working I ain't going out that day and I don't care what the chief or anybody else say until I get my equipment ready my gun and my camera and everything else because it's for my protection uh, I think we need to be very, very strict on this, and I'm, I'm sure the chief will come up with some type of policy on this, because uh, otherwise we're just wasting paper and time. And I, you know, I don't, I don't want to beat this dead horse with a stick, but uh, I mean, at, at the end of the day, protection speaks to legal protection, uh, and uh, officers should be open to this because, again, in this current uh, <coughs> legal climate. You know, it's not enough to say that I was on duty and a city employee when an incident occurred and, um, and I was, uh, you know, was or weren't, was not wearing my camera. Um, if, uh, if there's some level of liability, uh, you as an individual can be held accountable uh, to some degree. And, I, and maybe I'm not appropriately addressing that from, 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 a, from a legal standpoint, but I know the risk exists now, now in this existing climate. So it's important. For, uh, for on duty police officers to protect themselves. And I think this helps in that regard. Well, again, I'm, like you said, I don't want to beat it to death either, but if, uh, 
I think the headlines in the paper today that we the city is being sued by a former employee for harassment, sexual harassment. It would have been great if the uh, whoever it was had a camera on. You know, again, I don't know how much money we're going to spend, how much it's going to cost us to defend, and if you found guilt in the whole nine yards. But I think this is money well spent, providing we use it, and that's going to be the key. Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor to adopt the ordinance, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. Is there any other new business? Mr. President, I have a resolution I'd like to ask for unanimous consent to consider this morning. It's a resolution uh, uh, authorizing the application for a grant through ADECA for the uh, recreational uh, trails program. This is on Jim Martin Wildlife Park. It's a grant up to $100,000. So unanimous consent to consider. Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor to consider the resolution today, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed? Consent has been granted. I'll ask for passage, please. Second. Second. Is there any discuss, further discussion? This is uh, to replace the uh, boardwalk down on uh, Jim Martin Wildlife. It's going to cost about $200,000 to replace all that boardwalk. It's probably oh, a, a half a mile of boardwalk. Uh, it's being used by a lot of people. It's a, it's a great place to go down there in the afternoon. But anyway, this is uh, this is the first uh, step, something we've been working on for several years now. So we're, we're really pleased that uh, this uh, grant will be coming. So we'll, uh, we'll use this and raise a little more money and, and replace it, that boardwalk down there. I do want to commend uh, Councilman Stewart for being a strong advocate for this project over the years. I've, I've witnessed him grow, I mean, I've witnessed him fight. <laughs> I've witnessed him fight for these funds. So, uh, so he, he is definitely a strong advocate for It's it. the squeaking wheel that gets the grease. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's a passage, please. Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion <coughs> carries to adopt. Yeah. Mr. President, I have an uh, resolution I would like to ask for unanimous consent to consider today. It is a resolution approving a special events alcoholic beverage license for River Fest, which will be held on June 8th and June the 9th. Second. Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor to consider the resolution today, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, consent has been granted. Move to adopt. Second. See any discussion? Uh, Mr. President, if Ms. New would like to address that, uh, we'll let her have comments on the, about the uh, River, River Fest and the alcoholic beverage. Uh, Council, first I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to address this, address this issue. We want to assure you that we're going to use this uh, permit in the most responsible way possible. This will be a beer garden that will limit access uh, to 21 and up only. You will not be able to take a beverage outside of the beer garden. We've had repeated requests year after year after year that we implement a program such as this. We will be using law enforcement for security only. Uh, we have been working closely with the sheriff and with uh, Chief Crane here to make sure that we're going to do this in the most responsible method possible. And I do appreciate your consideration today. Hey, Heather, tell everybody again when River Fest is. It is June 8th and 9th. Tickets are on sale now, $35 for the weekend. That's the, about the cheapest festival, music festival you can go to in the state. <coughs> We, yeah. I just want to say, oh, you, it's okay. I'm, I'm just going to make a comment there. I just want to thank the River Fest committee or whoever. Uh, after 20 some years, I've been hammering the fact that the VIPs can go and have a drink and the average citizen couldn't. And I had a serious problem with that. As a matter of fact, I think when they first bought it up, I voted against it. I was very opposed to letting the VIPs have that opportunity when you don't give other citizens. So I'm glad to see y'all finally came into the 21st century and realized that everybody's important. So, good. Is there any other discussion? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. Is there any other new business? Mr. President, I have an item here, and this is an ordinance amending the fiscal year budget 2012 general fund budget to uh, 
extend the volunteer retirement incentive plan. So I'd ask for unanimous consent to consider. Second. Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor to consider the ordinance today, let it be known as saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Those opposed, consent has been granted. Now I'd ask for passage. Second. See any discussion? Mr. President, what we're doing here is putting in an additional uh, $1.1 million. We've had somewhere in the neighborhood of about 40 something employees, 46, 47 employees who have turned in their paperwork. Uh, again, we're not sure how many of those individuals are going to actually accept it, but we wanted to make sure there was enough funds and that just in case all 46 or 47 decided to go out. And so we're amending the budget to reflect that. Any other discussion? Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor to adopt the ordinance, let it be known as saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? <coughs> Motion carries to adopt. Any others? <coughs> Department reports, committees, are there any? Remarks by the mayor and the council, Ben? <coughs> sure, I want to just start off by thanking uh, three members of our Jacks Fine Dining Coffee Club on the mountain. <laughs> uh, they really went out of their way and did a neighborly thing on Sunday. Uh, Dole Bud and Jerry and uh, Charlie, uh, I want to thank them personally. I really do. And so I'll, pass, I'll tell y'all later what it was all about. But they came to a neighbor's uh, assistance and helped him out a great deal. The other thing is Buster Porch. <laughs> Billy, we went over there and of course, I got to say again, Billy and I went to Jack's Fine Dining and got us a hamburger. Absolutely. And came back to the Fine Dining of Buster and listened to that music at the Waterfall. Is that it? Waterwall. Waterwall. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. It, it was. really was. We had a good time. And the little girl that danced, Billy. <laughs> you can expound on that, but mm -mm. you got to tell me what the deal was. And to uh, Annie Ruth Guyton, she better in, just invite us to that party in June. We got them down pat. That's all I got. Billy, do expound on the little girl. <laughs> Johnny. I want to thank everyone who came out Saturday night to the music <laughs> on Megan at the Alabama City Gazebo. It was a great turnout. Uh, the only problem we had, we had about 150 people there. We gave out about 240 hot dogs. I just miscounted. I had more uh, dogs than I had buns, Mayor. I, <laughs> my math wasn't right on that for some reason. <laughs> but we're going to take care of that next month. We will be back next month having that. <laughs> Uh, I would like to thank Chief Crane and Mayor Guyton and Brian Harbison, Jason Hill, and uh, two police officers last night that came to the District 6 meeting. It was a big success. We had ironed out a bunch of stuff that was going on in our district, and we'll be having another one probably in <coughs> July, the 1st of July sometime. We'll get back with a time and date on that. But I just want to say that I'm really proud of how the police department's going now. I mean, we've, I've seen more police cars on the street riding tickets, uh, getting out, talking to people on foot, uh, checking abandoned buildings and having a long time. And I really do appreciate that. That's all I got. I'd like to uh, comment on uh, our new uh, police chief. He's keeping us informed on what's going on and I sure do appreciate that. Uh, I saw some uh, information and, and I cautioned everybody about driving in the city of Gadsden. Mm -hmm. on, uh, just looking at South 11th Street, one week, 50, let's say 41 speeding tickets uh, and several other tickets for no license and this, that, and the other. But And then the, the last week, uh, 25 speeding tickets. That's on South 11th Street alone. That's, they're doing a terrific job, but you, if you're driving in gasoline, you better slow down. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, I've I don't know if anybody realized that uh, I guess people in Montgomery realize that the legislature is still in session. I still got a bunch of visitors at my house from Montgomery. They always get the women and children out of town when they're down there. Um, it, it's, it's very interesting that the group that we sent down, uh, and I say we, uh, I didn't vote for any of them that's down there from our area, but that's another story. Um, we sent those individuals down, and they promised no new taxes. I mean, that was their thing. But ladies and gentlemen, they're taxing us to death. They're putting in all kind of fees and adding costs to this, adding costs to that. 
So you need to remind those individuals when they come back home after this session is over with about all those no new taxes. Uh, sure, they're not adding on property tax, but when you add uh, two or three hundred dollars on a court cost, or a thousand dollars on this cost, or something on another cost, I mean, it's a tax. I don't care how you look at it. Uh, as uh, one famous politician said, you know, uh, how you can tell a hockey mom from a pig, you, you put, it's got lipstick. Well, I don't care how you put lipstick on this thing, it's still a tax. And, and we need to be mindful of that, and I, I hope everybody will hold those individuals feet to the fire uh, when they come back home after this session is over with and see if we can't reverse this issue because the people who are being taxed are poor people. Uh, the people who can least afford uh, trying to get out of jail or get out of whatever the case may be, uh, uh, you know, these are the people who are being taxed and, and, and we need to uh, talk about that to our individuals and, and make sure that they understand that we know what's going on. I, I talked to uh, a friend of mine, we're going to be having our NBC Leo meeting uh, coming up in a couple of months, but I was talking to a friend of mine in another state about the property tax. We need to understand in Alabama, and I keep talking about that, that we're the number 50th in the nation when it comes down to property tax. And I know people don't like to talk about that, but that's a, a firm way of supporting education and supporting the state budget if we would go ahead on and do that. And it doesn't fluctuate. And it doesn't fluctuate. You're absolutely correct. You know, and, and, but but what happens? We've got these big land barons down in South Alabama and West Alabama, and wherever else, that own all that property down there. Those guys are paying somewhere in the neighborhood of about 50 cents per acre uh, on their taxes. They pay what I pay. They pay what you pay. <laughs> 50 cents per acre. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but but if you look at what we pay here in the city, if you take four houses that probably was set on an acre, you're talking about probably a thousand or so that we're paying property tax per acre in the city, and these guys are paying less than a dollar. Go figure it. There's something wrong with that picture. And we're talking about we're always broke, we can't fund state services and the whole nine yards. Talk to your representatives when they come back. Off my soapbox, I'm sorry. Well, I, was, I was going to have them call on the mayor next. And then <laughs> Adjourn the meeting and have a press conference. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor? I won't say much except another reason that the taxes are low is because the politicians in Montgomery don't spend the money right and people would do it if they knew it would be spent right. That's another big reason too on that. Plus you, you're right, those special interests, I don't know what you're talking That's about. I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I mean, it, while it's out there, <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't disagree at all. I mean, you know, if you look at when our state constitution was constructed and whose interests were represented, most of the folks in this room, um, women, minorities, uh, poor people, were not represented when it was developed, and, and, and those rules haven't changed much relative to our tax structure. So we, we possess probably one of the largest and most antiquated documents in the, not, not just in the country, but in the world relative to our state constitution. And it limits our ability to raise revenue in difficult economic times. So um, you got to remind, you know, to, to, to Councilman Avery's point, you got to remind uh, these elected officials that, uh, you know, we're, we're behind the times when it comes to uh, dealing with our economic shortfalls, and we've got to get more creative. My, my, my suggestion would be to eliminate the food tax and, uh, and raise uh, property taxes, but that's just one councilman's opinion. Um, the, uh, the, last, the only other thing that I have, and it's probably the most important thing, is, uh, is this. Uh, the anti-bullying event that, uh, that Ms. Raleigh is going to be uh, so graciously sponsoring is going to be held at, uh, it's going to begin at the YMCA. I think it's a 5K run and walk. I think uh, it's the, and again, it's anti-bullying and teen suicide. I don't want to, I don't want to shorten the title and, and take away any, from any of the effectiveness of the event. I think, again, it's wonderful that this young lady stepped up and been willing to do that. Uh, it starts Saturday at 8 o'clock. Uh, it starts Saturday at 8, again, at the Y, and uh, I can tell you that I'll be there, but I will not be running. <laughs> uh, but I'll be supporting, and I may walk, 
Uh, but uh, but I ask that anybody that's available this Saturday morning to please please come out and support this young lady, and uh, and, and 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 also there may be a need for because I think she's going to be providing T-shirts and and some other things, and that stuff costs money, doesn't it? So if there's any way for the public to support her in that regard, please do so. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I also would like to also emphasize the fact that we need to be behind this young lady in this effort to raise the awareness of bullying uh, in our society. I, I think it may have uh, been referred to up here uh, earlier that when we were in high school, and most of us were in high school, some of us well, came along a little later. <laughs> but most of us said back in the days when we were in high school, our elementary school, a big kid walk up to you and grab you and put a strong arm on you and take your lunch money from you. That was, about, that was about as much bullying as we had then, but boy, has it changed since then. So we need to, make, uh, we need to be aware of that and do everything that we can to prevent it uh, in our society today. Uh, and I hope that everyone will, to, to, to whatever degree you can, support this uh, function on Saturday. And uh, as Ben said, I, uh, I, I want everybody to support uh, lunch at the water wall with Buster uh, on Monday, uh, April tw uh, May 21st. I think he'll be there from 11 to 1. And like I said, we went down to Jack's and got some fine cuisine and came back and listened to some, soft, some, some, some music uh, that, that sort of depicts our time era. So I, I encourage you to do that. It was very relaxing. And I, I must tell you, I, I don't know if I can do this young lady justice. Uh, the little girl that was dancing, uh, there was one little girl that got up and she got out there and she danced. And she, she was about two years old, I guess. Two years old and she danced and she, I don't know what you call it. She did this little thing on her hands and turned over and rolled over. She was, and she was, a, it was beautiful. And she danced for 20 minutes, you know, out there. Just, just a wonderful event. It was good to see her out there. But I encourage you to join Buster for music. Uh, on the 21st. Uh, some of us won't be able to support him, but we'll be there in spirit, Buster. We may not be here, but we'll be there in spirit. Uh, <clears throat> and I also, uh, the, last night, you know, we had another, uh, Johnny had a District 6 meeting, and people were, people turned out for the meeting. Uh, the chief was there, the mayor was there, building was there, you know, uh, parks and recreation was there. We had, we had uh, several, Two police officers, in, in addition to the police chief, were there. And no, I, I, I must say, after the, the publicity that we gave that meeting, you know, the attendance was sort of uh, disappointing. And with the thing I want to encourage uh, all of our citizens, not just in District 6, but District 1, whenever there's a meeting being held in your area, in your district, you need to come out and attend because that's the time to bring things to department heads, the mayor, chief. Every, that's, that's the time to bring these issues to them uh, in a public forum and not just a, a telephone call or, 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 or an email or no. <coughs> so I encourage you to come to those meetings so that you can voice your opinion and then you can also hear some concerns of the city as well. So it's, it's a good working relationship that we need to establish uh, in all those meetings. I also encourage you to come to city council meeting also. But you get more accomplished uh, to me, you know, when you go to your district meetings, your, your, your neighborhood watch meetings that you have, attend those, please. Uh, reiterating what Bill Stewart said, uh, South 11th Street, I was shocked when I saw the number of tickets. I, well, I, I wasn't shocked. I was glad to see the number of tickets that they had written for speeding last week on, over on South 11th Street. And I was glad to see the number they had written on Peyton Ridge, Peyton Road, and River, River, Riverside. And he scares them. Uh, I'm going to continue to say that uh, we're going to we're going to we're going to uh, insist that the, our police force enforce the speed laws and the and, and, and the regulations that we have in the city. So, and we have certain areas that are that, that are more prone to people speeding than others, and that, those are areas where we have people cutting through communities and neighborhoods, uh, coming from surrounding cities, going to point A or point B, you know, and they're t coming through our neighborhoods and speeding. We're going to stop it. I, I'm just I'm just asking uh, everybody to be aware of it. And when you are aware of something, you know, call the chief. When, when there's an excessive speeding and excessive number of people speeding on your speed on your streets and your community and your neighborhood, call call the police. Call the police. I, I encourage you to do that. And my final thing is, by now the um, the governor should have signed. Uh, we hope he has signed the the no texting while driving uh, bill in in Montgomery. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> I, 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 want to, I want to encourage us to support that thing 100%. Uh, and, and the young people who are texting while you're driving, just be aware. Because it, it's a dangerous thing and it's a scary thing when I'm riding and I see people, young people texting. And I see the situations that they get themselves into while they're trying to drive and texting and eating and putting on makeup all at the same time. It, it, it's a terrible thing. So I encourage you to uh, obey the law and, and stop texting while you're trying to drive. We have, we have a texting uh, ordinance in our city already. But this is statewide. I know it's statewide. Come in, come we're, state. we're, you're aware of that. So we can, we, can, we can now enforce it more forcefully. Okay, did y'all get all you needed or do you need to have a press conference? <laughs> <laughs> I'll entertain a motion, we adjourn. So move. So move.